evening, folks. Melvin here. Or for you savvy sons of bitches, Konbonwa. Melvin here. Japan is a magical land with so much beauty to offer, like sexy ladies in schoolgirl uniforms, sexy ladies in schoolgirl uniforms eating McDonald's, and sexy ladies in schoolgirl uniforms selling their gently used panties in colorful vending machines. But beyond the barely legal beauty of the Empire of the Sun lays a badass world full of tradition and pride, dating all the way back to the ancient samurai. One of my favorite, albeit more modern Japanese traditions, is anime. Anime is an art form that pulls the viewer into the most fantastical worlds while typically acting as a mirror to society. It could portray the cutest thing your eyes have ever seen, or tentacle porn nightmare fuel that you just can't look away from. <laughs> it's just the best. Which brings me to today's list. The top five anime series of all time. More like Empire of the Fun. <laughs> And today's episode is brought to you by Crunchyroll. Get Crunchyroll ad-free for 30 days by signing up at crunchyroll.com slash warpzone and start watching great anime today. All right, to the list. Coming in at number five is Pokemon Indigo League. Look, I don't care who you are. If you were alive in 1997 when a 10 year old Ash Ketchum hit the scene, you were inspired to be an adventurer. And even though Pokemon aren't real, the idea of them didn't stop you from buying the video games, trading cards, t-shirts, plushies, Burger King toys, and rubber foam Pokeballs to throw at your older sister, praying that one day she would actually get caught in one and stop throwing wet sand at you while you're on vacation in Tampa. I mean, <laughs> what? Every week, millions of hopeful and imaginative kids would tune in to watch Ash, Brock, and Misty make their way to the Indigo Plateau while capturing cute, innocent creatures against their will to make them fight for pride and bragging rights along the way. The show had a kind of magic to it that I hadn't experienced at that point in my life. Every Pokemon gym the trio hit, every Oceanside trail they travel, and even every childlike mistake they made was depicted in a fantastical way that both looked beautiful on screen and filled my heart with happiness. The worst thing about the show was that poor excuse for comic relief, Team Rocket. Sure, Meowth could talk and was the smartest of the three, which added some unexpected chuckles, but overall they were the David Schwimmer of bad guys. Not good. Of course, the best part of the show for a lot of fans was that yellow Electromouse Pikachu. Pikachu joined the team because Ash, in classic millennial form, showed up late to Professor Oaks and the original three Pokemon had already been taken, but if it hadn't been for that mistake, the show's relationships and character development wouldn't have been nearly as strong. Kinda like Ayn from Cowboy Bebop. That little guy was a total accident and made a badass show even more badass. Come to think of it, Brock, Ash, and Misty are a lot like Jet, Spike, and Faye. The most incredible trio ever. Weird. In at number four is the newest series on the list, but one that came out of the gate and made a huge impact on the anime scene. You might even say it was colossal. The story takes place in an alternate Earth where humankind is on the brink of extinction. Why don't they just f their way back to growth and prosperity, you ask? Well, while the humans live in old houses behind enormous walls like a bunch of sad gerbils, there are these giant beings known as titans wandering around, and their only objective is to f***ing eat human beings. Now, I might be a little sick and twisted, but just the premise alone had me going from 6 to midnight. Admittedly, the show got off to a slow start, but overall did a fantastic job setting up for 25 episodes of awesome. Not only does the show display amazingly choreographed battle scenes with creatures who want to end humankind's existence, but it also does a hell of a job diving into the psychology of facing our own extinction. Early on, the show focuses on Aaron Yeager, a weak young man whose only mission in life is to join the Army's Scout Regiment so he can travel outside the walls. But spoiler alert, this little bitch has Titan power so he can pretty much do whatever the f*** he wants. It ends up being both a blessing and a curse because while humankind can use him for good, many people don't trust him. Unlike Spike Spiegel, who everyone trusts because he's a calm, laid-back fighting machine with smoky, trusting pipes who has the smolder of 12 Latin lovers. Yeah, you're in good hands when Spike's around. Also, a titan wouldn't stand a chance when Spike jumps into the swordfish. I mean, who would you hire to take down shambling giants who want to eat your family? Some scared shitless steampunk Spider-Man who might as well be covered in Chipotle marinade? Or Spike in a spaceship with a Devastator class plasma cannon? <laughs> I think the choice is obvious. Number three on the list is easily one of the best written shows of all time, animated or otherwise. It's Death Note. The show focuses on Light Yagami, a high school student who's so goddamn smart that he's constantly bored at school. <laughs> I can totally relate. Also, I had a lot of sex. And his Grim Reaper S. Shinigami Ryuk, who's killed so many people that he's bored but doesn't go to school. He's just up there on his scary looking death cloud house thing. Anyway, to have some fun, Ryuk drops the death note for a bored high schooler to find and hilarity ensues. Okay, so it's not really funny. Turns out Light is a f***ing savage and starts killing a lot of people, but they're all bad guys. Which brings the behavioral psychology and social acceptance elements into play. Is killing okay? You know who doesn't think so? Light's dad Sochiro, who happens to be an honest cop. An honest cop who will stop at nothing to bring justice to this vigilante killer. Wow. And I thought my daddy issues ran deep. <laughs> 
I wonder what ever happened to him. Named Kira, or Killer, by the news, Light develops a nationally known reputation of being a serial killer, and half of the public seems to be pretty okay with it. After all, crime rates are down and public safety is up, which sounds like a pretty sweet deal. The other half of the public, of course, question the morality of it all, and whether it's okay for one person to play God. Like, any of them wouldn't do the same damn thing but for less. Like, take out that Applebee's waitress for talking to her friends instead of refilling your strawberry lemonade. Sometimes you gotta make an example, Cindy. Anyways, since he's just a kid with a book, Light is pretty much impossible to track down. Even his cop dad, who he lives with, has no f***ing clue how to catch him. Enter a caffeine-addicted private detective, L. L works with Interpol and Sochiro in what becomes the most intense game of cat and mouse in any anime ever. Well, except, of course, for the very first episode of Cowboy Bebop, Asteroid Blues. Spike and Jet head down to TJ to catch the drug trafficker Asimov Solonson and his mega babe girlfriend Katarina. Spike was always one step ahead of them in a sexy game of cat and mouse that ended in the best hand-to-hand -hand fight sequence ever. <clears throat> Cowboy Bebop! Sliding in at the number two spot is the gorgeous looking space western about the humanoid typhoon and the chaos he causes along his journey to find out who the f he really is. It's Trigun. Vash's stampede has more rumors surrounding him than a drunk girl on prom night. Sure, Vash has caused a whole lot of damage, but he doesn't remember it, much like a drunk girl on prom night. The often frustrated but always adorable duo, Meryl and Millie, are sent by the Bernadelli Insurance Company to evaluate the claims of damage done by Vash. The three look out for each other along the way as they always seem to end up in the same place at the same time. Since Vash plays a low-status genius who is always goofing around, the two don't realize they've accidentally teamed up with the man they've been hired to track. Don't let their appearances fool you, though. These ladies are more heavily armed than a drunk conspiracy theorist living in rural Michigan. ka -chow. And of course, every badass anime anti-hero needs an equally badass anime antagonist. In the case of Trigun, it's none other than Vash's twin brother, Knives. Vash and Knives are sentient power plants, each with different ideas of how their powers should be used. <sighs> Classic sibling rivalry. Knives wants to absorb everything he can, including his brother. Vash obviously wants to put an end to that, with the main goal of saving humanity and a healthy side of horseplay. This all culminates in one of the coolest super fights in small screen history. I mean, the two almost caused the apocalypse. Okay, so classic world-ending sibling rivalry. But the real damage in the show is done by the absolutely amateur bounty hunters trying to bring Vash in for a 60 billion double dollar reward along the way. Now, I don't know what the double dollar to Wulong conversion rate is, but I bet Spike would bring in Vash for a hundred bucks and a couple orders of duck fried rice just to show that he could. We get it, Vash. You're super talented with your big gun, and you like to act all goofy and charming so everyone likes you while you're hunting your bro. Well, guess what, Space Cowboy? There's only room for one Space Cowboy, and he's aboard the Bebop with his cowboy friends. Are they all searching for inner peace through veiled tough guy exteriors? Yes. Do they sometimes get themselves into precarious situations because they don't think? Sure, sometimes. Do they often put innocent lives in danger while securing their objective? Absolutely, but they do it with a certain panache. And they listen to cool jazz music, and Spike is so awesome and cool and you know what? Three, two, one, let's jam. Cowboy Bebop is number one. There's no question, it's just the best. Shinichiro Watanabe is known for creating incredible worlds and characters and pairing them with juxtaposed music to create unique styles. New genres even. It's an audio-visual umami that in the case of Cowboy Bebop gives my brain's taste buds a soul boner. The arc of the show is so well thought out that the audience is able to be taken on in-depth journeys into each of the characters' backstories and rather than taking anything away from the A story, it only adds so much riches and depth to the show and the Bebop team. Take Jamming with Edward, for example. It's the episode in which they find a young girl hacker with a boy's name who ends up being one of the strongest characters in the show. She originally helps them track down another hacker who's using satellites to make geographic graffiti on the Earth's surface as long as they allow her to be part of the team. When they try to take off without her, she hacks the Bebop and doesn't let them leave until they hold up their end of the bargain. From this point on, she becomes the weird and lovable daughter figure to Spike and Jet, who can barely even take care of themselves. Add I to the mix, and baby, you got a stew going. And of course you can't mention the masterpiece that is Cowboy Bebop without talking about the love story of all love stories, the violent slash romantic three-way mind f that is Spike, Vicious, and Julia. There was always clearly a lady in Spike's life, and like many brooding badasses, she may very well have been the North Star to his vengeful journey. In a very Shakespearean way, we find out that Julia was originally dating Vicious, but was planning on running away with Spike, whom she truly loved. It never happened, though, when Julia went into hiding to protect Spike. Jeez, man, I can't even get a girl to poke me back on Facebook. And while Vicious is the overarching antagonist of the show, he and Spike have a long, layered history with each other. The show does a beautiful job of periodically flashing back to a time when they were once close friends and comrades fighting side by side, and then jumping us to the tear-jerking conclusion in The Real Folk Blues Parts 1 and 2. When Faye accidentally finds Julia, she and Spike are reunited again. The two lovers meet for the first time in so long, only for her to be killed in an ambush that was aimed for the members 
members of the Bebop. Now that the driving force in both men's hearts lay dead, they meet each other for one last battle. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> in terms of anime, hell, in terms of entertainment, this shit is next level. The fact that it just so happens to be in space with interplanetary travel and insane fight sequences is actually just a bonus to the gifts our brains have already been given with the whole package that is Cowboy Bebop. It's amazing. Oof. I'm gonna have to walk this bad boy off. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, there you have it, my top five anime series of all time. Now, while I may be a little biased towards number one, the real message here is that like the ancient Japanese tradition of sword making, these masters of animation have spent their lives perfecting their craft, and you get to enjoy the results via Toonami and your Crunchyroll subscriptions. So whatever you're into, be it space cowboys, awesome love stories, genius dogs, epic jazz-infused fights, or Faze Young's 77-year-old boobs, there's a Cowboy Bebop for you. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight, folks. I'm Melvin, and we'll see you, Space Cowboy. Hey folks, thanks for watching. We want to thank Crunchyroll for sponsoring this episode. Crunchyroll is the destination for the most authentic anime experience you can find outside of Japan. Each season, Crunchyroll brings in the best new anime from Japan to deliver the largest lineup of anime from classics to new favorites. Get Crunchyroll ad-free for 30 days by signing up at crunchyroll.com slash warpzone or by clicking on the link in the description. If you like this, why not check out either of these other two awesome videos? And be sure to subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest Warpzone content. Anywho, we're gonna get out of here, so see ya, space cowboys. Haha, <laughs> that was a reference.